consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Behold, the dwelling of God is with men. He will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be with them. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed Lord and Father. We are assembled in your name and in fellowship with one another. In a way of our sign of grace to offer the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to proclaim and respond to your word. Teach us to pray for your word and your church. Grant that we may confess in our sins to be worthy of your souls and bodies and a living sacrifice and eat and drink of your spiritual food in this holy sacrament. Amen. Almighty God,
whose glory we celebrate, the dedication of this house of prayer. We give you thanks for the fellowship of those who worship in this place for 176 years. And we pray that all who seek you here may find you and be filled with your joy and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask, and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness, and mercifully give us those things for which our unworthiness we dare not, and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. We recite our theme colic. O God our Father, you are my grace, and on you there is no other. Kindly be seated for the reading. A reading from the Word of God, written in the book of First Peter, the first letter of Peter. Reading verse chapter two, verses one to five and nine to ten. Rid yourselves, therefore, of all malice and all guile, insincerity, envy, and slander. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good, Come to him a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Rocky River 
Glory to Christ our Savior. Jesus entered the temple and drove out all who were selling and buying in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. He said to them, It is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he cured them. When the chief priests and the scribes saw the amazing things that he did, and heard the children crying out in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David, they became angry and said to him, Do you hear what these are saying? Jesus said to them, Yes, have you never read, out of the mouths of infants and nursing babies, you have prepared praise for yourself. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. be seated. A very pleasant good morning, St. Agnes. Good morning. good morning. God is good. Today we have come to celebrate the 176th anniversary of this house of God. God has spared our lives to see St. Agnes our day for the 176 years that we have been in this place, giving God his due and his praise. In God good? Amen. Yes, sir. And I would like to welcome each and every one of you here today. And I would like also to welcome on your behalf, Father Colin Humes, who is our preacher for this morning in our festivities. Father Humes originally comes from St. Matthew's and then onward to the cathedral. And then, of course, he went after ordination to Inagua and, of course, is here, back here in Nassau at the cathedral and then now at St. Margaret's. We want to assure Father Humes of a very warm welcome and to thank him to thank him for coming and sharing with us this morning. Let us give Father Humes a round of applause. Amen. I want to say a big thank you to the Coakley family for providing all of the flowers and decorations today in the church in loving memory of Agnes Coakley Burnside and Bismarck Coakley. Thank you very much to the Coakleys for the flowers and the decorations and the plants. To God be the glory. Tuesday is the Feast of St. Margaret, the patron saint of St. Margaret's Church here in New Providence, St. Margaret's Church in Hearts Exuma, and Savannah Sound Eleuthera, and also St. Margaret's in Nicholstown in North Andrews. Thursday is the Feast of St. Mary Magdalene, and is the patron saint of our churches in Wimses Bight Eleuthera, Glinton's North Long Island, Williamstown in Little Exuma, West End in Grand Bahama, and Mastic Point in Andros. And so let us remember all of our sister churches as this week they celebrate their Feast of Titan. Services during this week will be at the usual times, Wednesday at 12.30, midday mass, followed by six o'clock in the evening, Bible study, all socially distanced, and Saturday at 9 a.m. 
please when you come into the church please make sure that you print your name and your telephone contact and please make sure you sanitize your hands and make sure you are escorted to your seats by an usher and you sit in the appropriate spots please for our special protocol seating in church I please remind you all of those things and we are planning to honor our frontline members here at St. Agnes and we plan to do that during the month of August if those persons here today know of persons who are on the front line of the pandemic please contact Ms. Maxine Williamson or Ms. Penola Knowles as soon as possible Tomorrow we begin our vacation Bible school socially distance, but for only children 5 through 10. 5 through 10, they must obey and be ready for the social protocols put in place. So please let us make sure those children 5 through 10 are in attendance this week. The ACM have their raffle going on. And please, members of the congregation, let us please support the members of the Anglican Church men. And our ladies will have a South South on the morning of the 2nd of August, or the, the sorry, the 3rd of August, the 2nd, that's right, of August, which is August Monday, Emancipation Day. In the parking lot, it is a drive through, and it is a pickup as you go. So please let us remember those fundraising events. We want to congratulate today our youngster Craig Ferguson who competed in the sailing competition in Milan, Italy. He did extremely well and we want to congratulate him. We want to congratulate Dr. Janelle Brown on her wonderful successful successes in the medical field and also David Aubrey, who graduated from Queen's College with honors, and also Danane McKinsey, who is now a CPA. We want to congratulate all of them. Let us give them all a round of applause, please. Very proud of all the accomplishments of so many of our St. Agnes people. We've been announcing them over these last several weeks, and we congratulate them all. We want to announce that Ms. Louise Blyden, one of our faithful members, is out of doctor's hospital now. And Ms. Yvette Butler, one of our nurses in the Princess Margaret Hospital, is out of the Princess Margaret Hospital and is at home. But we also want to remember in our prayers Kachara Marshall, who is in doctor's hospital at this time. So remember her very, very fondly, please. I should like also to ask you to remember in your prayers those who mourn in our parish, um, the McNeil family on the passing of Varia, and the Roll family on the passing of Perlet, the Papal family on the passing of Mary, the Kemp family on the passing of Peter, and the Wright family on the passing of Jackie. And we have special thanks from the Roberts family for our prayers and support during their bereavement. Upon all of their souls and all of the Christian souls, may sweet Jesus have mercy. Amen. Happy birthday to all those celebrating birthdays this week. God bless you and we have lots of anniversaries this week. Happy anniversary to all those celebrating their anniversaries at this time. And this evening, at 6.30, we are all invited to come back and practice social distancing to end our celebrations on the Lord's Day in the evening at 6.30 with solemn even song, sermon, indoor procession and benediction. This is our day and this is a wonderful day that we give God thanks. We have been blessed here at St. Agnes, wonderfully blessed. And to God be the glory. And I am so excited this morning to be here to celebrate with you our, our anniversary. When we mark these days, these are special occasions for us to reflect on our heritage, where we have come from, where we are now, where we hope to go. God has blessed us. And in the midst of a terrible pandemic, 
We are here this morning giving God praise and glory. And so I thank God for this opportunity. And I hope and pray that you will spread the word that God has been good to us here at St. Agnes. And to remind all and sundry how good and gracious God has been. So this evening, let us all make it our business to be present, socially distanced, and following all the protocols, and make it a wonderful evening as we close out our celebrations. And in our celebration time, we have our gift day. And many of us who are still with an income are asked to make that sacrificial offering today or sometime in the near future. Many of us have not yet done so, and I hope and pray that you will be so moved to do so. And those of us who have done so already, then be like Father and do a little something extra. And so I invite you to get your envelopes at the doors, put your names on them, put your contributions in them, and give God the praise and the glory as we thank him in this very special way. And so, ladies and gentlemen, God bless you all, and let us welcome our guest preacher, Father Colin Humes, and just before he comes, our choir will render a selection. Thank you.
Please be seated. Morning, St. Agnes. Morning, it is a wonderful privilege to be here to share with you as you celebrate 176 years. I assure you, I am not that old, but I have fond memories of St. Agnes, uh, times visiting here, and especially since becoming ordained. I have to share this. While Archdeacon was reading the notices, I recall my first time preaching at St. Agnes. That was 22 years ago. I had been a dean no longer than four weeks. I was fresh. And I had been invited by the late Archdeacon William Thompson. And I remember the feast. It was the beheading of St. John. And why I remember is because he got up to read the notices, but before that, I had not recalled what the custom was. He said, go and stand in the pulpit. But the notices were extremely long that morning. And I was standing here shaking. But I just recall that. And again, I'm delighted for the invitation to share with you today. I bring greetings on behalf of my wife and family and the people of St. Margaret's Camp Road. We continually pray for you, and we ask that you continually pray for our ministries there. I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Reflection for today is taken from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 28, verses 5 through 7. Matthew, chapter 28, verses 5 through 7, which reads, The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised. And he said, come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. Now you may wonder what that reading has to do with our Feast of Dedication. It's one of the readings for Easter. But as we celebrate this dedication festival, we're reminded of an ancient Jewish festival, the Feast of Dedication, a festival which observed, which was observed each year to mark the anniversary of the cleansing and reconsecration of the temple in Jerusalem after Judas Maccabeus, the great Jewish hero, had recaptured the city from the pagan oppressors. You can read that story in 1 Maccabees. But as we celebrate our Feast of Dedication, we mark the dedication of this house of prayer for 176 years. And this particular church building as a particular place of God's presence within us in both word and sacrament. But there are several levels of meanings to be considered here. According to the scriptures, the temple means not only the building, but also the spiritual community which gathers there a spiritual house. St. Peter calls it a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of God's own possession. And there is still a further dimension. The temple means also the house of God within each one of us. For we ourselves are living temples of the Lord, holy and acceptable to him. And these levels of meaning indicate the temple is the place of God's presence, the place of the meeting of the soul with God. And so this building, which we celebrate, is, as it were, a sacrament, an outward and visible sign of that gracious and indwelling presence. This building then stands as a sign, a reminder in a very secular culture of all that belongs to it and all that goes into it must always reaffirm the sacred. Everything that goes on here day by day, the faithful recitation of common prayer, the solemn commemoration of the work of our redemption, all the words and all the music and all our liturgies must be reminders of the holiness of God. That must be our dedication. 
I recall while serving as the priest in Bimini, at times hearing the radio communications of the boaters heading from Florida to Bimini. And often you would hear over the radio, look for the steeple, and just head in that direction. The steeple of the church of Our Lady and St. Stephen's stood as a beacon. Immediately the boaters knew that they were heading in the right direction. It stood out from the other buildings. It was a dedicated building. It had a purpose that was well defined. Well, in the same way, the boaters would also look for other landmarks or wreckages that stood out. The church, however, stood out and is dedicated to a clear purpose. So we realize that buildings, on the one hand, with dedicated purposes like churches or schools or airports. And then on the other hand, there are buildings that are versatile and are infinitely adaptable, like office buildings and shops. Well, the same is true of people. Some are infinitely adaptable. They conform to whatever the prevailing pressures and fads are. They conform to the group but then there are others who stand out from the crowd as dedicated people. And over the years, I've always known St. Agnes to stand out. That is why I was always afraid to come and preach in St. Agnes, knowing the great history. Like your patron saint and various other saints and martyrs, you stand out. You have certain beliefs and principles, and do not mind who knows it. Some refer to St. Agnes as a cult, not in a bad sense. But we must be a dedicated people, so how about you? What kind of person are you? Infinitely adaptable so as to please anyone and everyone? Or are you a dedicated people? For as believers, we are called to share the resurrection faith. And the words of the angel I quoted in the beginning, the words of the angels to those early eyewitnesses on that first Easter day are valuable lessons to us being dedicated people and living sacrifices. And so I wish to highlight this morning three gospel commands spoken through the angel to those early eyewitnesses from Matthew 28. The angel said, do not be afraid, come and see, Go and tell. And those are the three commands I want to highlight today. Don't be afraid. And I understand St. Agnes people never scare. Don't be afraid. Come and see. Go and tell. The first command, don't be afraid. Words spoken to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Words also spoken to the shepherds about the birth of Christ. And words spoken to us. Whenever these words are used in scripture, they seem to indicate that the power of God will be demonstrated, that something new is about to happen, some type of transformation. We learn here and from various other scriptures that it is usually the unlikely people who seem to get the message and are changed forever. What do I mean? One of those early eyewitnesses was Mary Magdalene whose feast we will celebrate later this week. She is a woman, and in those days, women were considered to be second-class citizens. But more than that, she also had a bad reputation. Yet, God entrusted the crucial message of the resurrection to her. So what about you? Don't be afraid of your past to be a living sacrifice to be a dedicated person. We are reminded in scripture that Jesus took it all and nailed it to the cross. So don't be afraid and continue to give him praise. So no matter what they say, look at him. Look at her. I know you're dirt. Don't be afraid. Continue to praise him. Paul, St. Paul reminds us that nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And so the first command, as we celebrate this dedication and seek to continue to be dedicated people, is don't be afraid. 
The second command is come and see. Well, often we doubt or have uncertainties. And I believe it's normal to have questions, but we must not let them overwhelm us and keep us away from the church, from the fellowship, and prevent us from being living sacrifices. Remember, the story of the resurrection is about new life, transformation. And we must understand that new doesn't always look shiny or clean. God is about transformation. And new doesn't always look perfect or fabulous. Because like the Easter story, new can sometimes be messy. What do I mean? New can look like the reconciliation between family members who we feel don't actually deserve it. New can look like recovering alcoholics or substance abusers. New can look like the awkward forgiveness that we manage to scrounge up despite ourselves. New can also look like every moment of letting go of what we thought we couldn't live without and then somehow discover that we can. New can look like the thing we never saw coming, never even hoped for, but ends up being what we needed all along. And it can happen to any one of us. And God simply keeps reaching down into the dirt of humanity and pulling us out of the graves we dig for ourselves through our violence, our lies, our sin. But God continues to love us over and over and over again. So let us continue to come and see, to be a part of this church that has stood for these past 176 years and continue to be a dedicated people. So yeah, we may say, I don't like Father so-and-so, or I don't like the president of this group or that group, or I don't like her because her dress or her fella look better than mine. But still come and see why we still pray for those who have wronged us, why we pray for murderers, for those who we feel are too far gone for love or forgiveness, and see if the Lord's words from the cross don't apply to us. Those words that say, today you will be with me in paradise. For the words in the act of penitence challenge us to come and see. Those words that we know so well. If we say we have no sin, we deceive who? Ourselves. And the truth is not in us. So come and see if God is faithful and just. Come and see how we must continue to be living sacrifices. People who are dedicated. Just as we celebrate the dedication of this building. So don't be afraid. Come and see. And the third command, go and tell. By virtue of our baptism, we are all called to be ministers. Unfortunately, many think that the work of spreading the kingdom and spreading the gospel must be left to paid professionals. But by virtue of our baptism, it is for all of us. The success of Christianity is up to you and me. The system fails if there are no witnesses. And so if we are dedicated people, we must continue to be witnesses. We must continue to gossip the gospel. We can either be good witnesses or hostile witnesses. But either way, we must continue to be a witness. I share this story, one I've used, and I think I've used it here at St. Agnes before. I'll say it again. There's a story of a prosecuting attorney who called his first witness to the stand in a trial, an elderly woman. He approached her and asked, Mrs. Rowe, do you know me? And she responded, why yes, I know you, Mr. Wilson. I've known you since you were a young boy. And frankly, you've been a big disappointment to me. You lie and you cheat. You manipulate people and talk about them behind their backs. You think you're a big, rising, hotshot lawyer? 
When you don't have the brains to realize that you will never amount to anything more than a two-bit paper pusher. Yes, I know you. The lawyer was stunned. Not knowing what else to do, he pointed across the courtroom and asked Mrs. Roll, do you know the defense attorney? And she replied, Mr. Johnson? Oh, yes, I know Mr. Johnson. And from since he was a youngster, I used to babysit him for his parents. And like you, he too has been a big disappointment. He's lazy, chauvinistic, and he has a drinking problem. The man can't build a normal relationship with anyone, and his law practice is one of the shoddiest in the country. Yes, I know him. At this point, the judge knocked his gavel for the courtroom to be silent and called both counselors to the bench. And in a very quiet voice, he whispered, if either of you ask this woman if she knows me, you'll be jailed for contempt. Well, what kind of witnesses are we going to be? Many of us are unwilling to take the stand. But if you want our church to be faithful, to continue another 176 plus years, if you want our church to be vibrant, if you want our church to be whatever you deem it to be, you must continue to be witnesses who are dedicated people. The success or failure of Christianity depends on you and me. Like the disciples of Jesus, we are not the most qualified, but like the followers of any follower of Jesus, we must be witnesses. As the saying reminds us, God does not always call the equipped, but he equips the called. And so yes, at times we may feel inadequate about our spiritual journey, but remember a saying I said earlier, unusual and unlikely people get it and are changed forever. People just like you and me, like Mary Magdalene, like Peter who was sometimes impulsive, and many other persons whom we can think about, whom God has used. And so we must continue to be a dedicated people, continue to be living sacrifices. And remember those commands, come and see, go and tell. But for God's sake, don't be afraid. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
We pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that we that every member of the church may, may truly humbly serve you. And your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for our bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to your will in all that we undertake. Have passion, compassion on those who suffer from every grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We, pray, we praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our needs and those of others. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, of penitence. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sin, God is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us therefore confess our sins. Almighty God, we have, we have sinned against you and another. We all pray for you and for your children. We are sorry for all our sins. For your Son, Lord Jesus Christ, forgive us all our sins and grant us peace. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The offertory again is 403, 403.
Father, we offer you these gifts, your goodness, this bread, this wine, this money, with them we offer ourselves, our lives, and our work, to be gone for your Holy Spirit, a reasonable, holy life and sacrifice. As this bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ, so may we be all your people, come to our hearts and come to our hearts, to the name of Christ, our Lord. We offer our Eucharist in humble thanksgiving to our ever gracious, ever loving God for 176 years for this house of prayer dedicated to his glory, honor, and service. We give thanks for all that God has enabled us to accomplish as a parish family, and we seek an outpouring of his spirit upon us that we may be deepened in our faith and our commitment to serve him and to witness to him in sincerity and in truth. We pray especially for this parish family, for our brothers and sisters in our diocesan family, in our provincial family, and in the worldwide Anglican communion. We use the preface for the dedication and Eucharistic form A. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. unto the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father Almighty, everlasting God for your blessings on this house of prayer, where we are stirred to faithful witness and are built by your spirit into a temple made without hands, even the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this him to proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs>
glorious Father, our Creator God, we give you thanks because in your loving wisdom you brought all things into being and are truly worthy of praise from every creature you have made. Again and again we have turned away from you, yet in every age your steadfast love has called us to return to live in union with you. For it is your eternal purpose to put new life into all things and make them holy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, who took our human nature upon him, you have redeemed the world from the bondage of sin. And by the power of your Holy Spirit, you have gathered a people to yourself to make known in every place his perfect offering which he made to the glory of your name. Hear us, therefore, Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and grant that these gifts of bread and wine may be unto us his body and blood. For on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you, and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. And let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. you father our sacrifice of thanks and praise so heavenly father rejoicing in his holy incarnation his blessed passion and his perfect sacrifice made once for all upon the cross his mighty resurrection from the dead his glorious ascension into heaven and looking for his coming in glory, we offer to you this bread and this cup. We pray that you will accept this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and grant that all who eat and drink of the body and blood of your Son, our great High Priest, may be renewed by your Holy Spirit, and be one body, one spirit in him. Let faith and love increase in us, Unite us with all bishops, all other ministers of your word and sacraments, and with the whole people of God, living and departed, whom you have made for yourself. Confirm us in holiness, that we may be found ready to join the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Holy Apostles, and all your saints, when our Lord Jesus Christ comes again forever, giving you thanks and praise through him from whom all good things do come with him and in him and through him by the power of the holy spirit we worship you father almighty with all who stand before you in earth and heaven in songs of everlasting praise Savior has taught us, so we pray.
break this bread to share in the body of Christ. So we are ready, we are one body, because we all share one bread. The gifts of God for the people of God. Our souls will be simply satisfied, and we will sing our songs of praise again.
Eternal God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us the glory and the Lord of our Son, Jesus Christ. Stand us out in the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you in all persons in you with gladness and singleness of heart. We are Son, Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with you. My help is in the name of the Lord. Who is in heaven and earth. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Christ, the Son of God, born of Mary, fill you with his grace to trust his promises and to obey his will. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you all.
And the Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May the souls of the faithful through the mercies of God rest in peace. Tonight at 6.30. God bless you all.